Last time on Chasing the Dream, four rising stars were on a mission to prove that they've got what it takes to be a global champion. As well as delivering spectacular results for their teams, today, as we mentioned, not a single fence going these down. These young riders can also win big as individuals. De Vos or Thomas, De Vos or Thomas, by a second it is Gilles Thomas who takes the lead. The lead. Gunkinam and Sanatese for 39 and 1. She has not win it. She won it. She wins it. There's Sanatese. It's magic. It's unbelievable. Global Champions League is the world's most prestigious team competition in show jumping. Top riders join forces to form elite multinational teams, competing for the sport's highest prize money. Some of these under 25 riders will be the champions of tomorrow. Be as good as we can and compete with the people at the higher level. Yeah, you want to do it right for the team. I'm here to win and not just take part. Winning uh, the Grand Prix in Madrid was uh, yeah amazing feeling, uh, of course. Sana was amazing in Madrid. Um, the atmosphere was electric and um, Conquidam was amazing and was fantastic to see. She's doing what everybody else wants to be doing, you know, so it's, that's, 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 the, uh, that's the goal. Ladies and gentlemen, beating Derek that will last in the history. Sana Tyson's dazzling Grand Prix win in Madrid had everyone talking about the 23-year-old strong-willed style. Sana Tyson wins. I was really surprised last year that Sana Tyson decided to start her own business because there's more luxury than riding in the business of your father with his horses, no financial risk, no pressure, but she decides to start her own business and, and to risk it all. I think Sama has got confidence in herself. For example, in Madrid, she's got Jos Lansik, a world champion, um, an LGCT Grand Prix winner alongside of her to help her in the jump off. She, she ignores the advice of Jos Lansik, goes her own route and proves to the world that her own plan is better than the plan of all those big champions. And you're full focused and I had uh, the plan to do the first line on seven instead of eight strides. Uh, and nobody did that. So yeah, it's a little bit of risk. And uh, when then everything works out and you cross the finish line, yeah, then everything comes out in like full emotion. <laughs> The performance of Sana in Madrid yeah, was amazing. She and uh, Conky Dam are such a strong team. So uh, for me, uh, it only motivates me more to do also good. So especially in Madrid, like Sana won the Grand Prix. And then the day after, I was a bit more uh, motivated. And then I won the Copa del Rey. Winning Copa del Rey was something really special. I think it was one of my biggest wins so far in my career. Welcome to Saint-Tropez, welcome to uh, Global Champions League here at Ramatuel Saint-Tropez, the French Riviera. As the league heads into mid-season, Jill Thomas gets his next chance to shine in glamorous Saint-Tropez. From big, okay, Thomas by far. This is a triple, sinking behind his leg again. Thomas really having to ride the careful stallion. It's another great weekend for the talented young rider, as he jumps well in both the team and the individual rounds. At the moment it's mid-season and I'm uh, in the top 10 in the individual rankings. I didn't expect it at all actually. Even before the season I wasn't really thinking about it. I was more focused on the team. Actually to be in the top 10 is, yeah, it surprised me yeah, because here they are yeah, the best riders and best horses in the world. The 2022 season is also becoming a milestone year for Mike Kawai, the under-25 rider for the London Knights. Action! <laughs> Hi, this is Mike Kawai. Uh, I'm a U25 rider and I'm in London Knights team and I'm from Japan. How I started riding is because of my father. When I was a little, he always pushed me to ride. I didn't like it actually. Of course, yeah, I had the pain in the ass. <laughs> you know, when you when the horse trot, I had the pain. So I didn't really like it. But uh, yeah, I said to my dad, uh, OK, let's try. Yeah, once I started, I just really liked it. I, I don't know, just a feeling, you know. And when I was 18, my father one day said, you should go to Tokyo Olympics, which is like 
In three, four years was the uh, Olympics. What are you saying? Like, are you crazy or what, you know? My Kawhi story is an interesting one to follow. Four years ago, he came to Valkeswaard to Jan Tops um, to be trained. But at that point, he was, he was just jumping over this chair. For my Kawhi to first go to Jan Tops, not speak any English, um, go to one of the biggest trainers in the world. That takes a lot of courage. When my father told me to go to train with Jan, don't have any contact, no connection. So actually we sent the email. After three days, no reply. And so okay, then we said, I just go. So I arrived there, okay, where's Jan Tops? Approximately five years ago, Mike came to Valkeswaard and asked if he could be trained with us at Stahl Tops. And his aim was to go to, uh, to the Olympics. He didn't speak any word of English. We communicate together, you know, by, by Google and translate. I make one letter actually, that's like, I'm from Japan, I want to go to the Tokyo Olympics, I'm jumping 120 class, you know, I, I showed him one paper with English. And when he said it, he was laughing. But I was really serious, you know, because I want to make this happen. Mike's audacious plan paid off, and show jumping legend Jan Tops agreed to train him. We started in the two-star shows, and then at the end he, uh, he made it to go to, uh, to Tokyo. Um, he was a reserve rider, but was already a great ac accomplishment. When the Federation called me that uh, you are the one that go to the Olympics for, as a reserve rider, I was like chicken skin everywhere. <laughs> and then like, yeah, I called my father, I made it. And like, yeah, of course he was so happy. And uh, also Jan, of course. Mike has been riding in the Global Champions League since 2018, but it's this year that he's become a clear round machine. Kawhi with another clear on Goldwyn. Here he comes, Mike Kawhi. Yeah, there it is. Let's be honest, in the first year, you could wonder if my Kawhi had a place in Global Champions League. But apparently, my Kawhi had confidence in himself and even more young tops. And then this year, you see that my Kawhi, up until a point, he was, he was the best under 25 rider of the league. I think this is the best time of the my Global Champions Tour, for sure. He has a lot of talent, a lot of feel. I think Mike, sometimes the discipline, you know, is, is different with him. You know, he's taking everything sometimes easy. I think I'm a bad sportsman. <laughs> you know, I'm hard to wake up a little bit in the morning, but in the night I always awake, you know. Still think he needs to dedicate more time and needs to be, become more professional, but that, that little spark that Jan Tops may have seen in my Kawaii now is turning into a little fire. The tour moves on to majestic Hamburg. At the historic Derby Park. Jack Whitaker is eager to get back in the saddle after his spleen injury. So about five weeks ago, and I was walking out the stables, drinking a cup of tea, and uh, just walking past the hustle, just a bit of a freak thing, and I was walked past it, it was behind me, and must have spooked, jumped out, and kicked me in the back. I got lucky, actually, it didn't get my spine or my ribs or anything, but like it uh, lacerated my spleen. I was wary of the spleen. I'm not allowed to get a big bang, really, for the next, for the next couple of months. So, uh, so I decided it's probably not a bad idea to try and maybe wear a body protector in case I fall off and gives me a little bit more protection for the spleen. Hello and welcome to Klein Flotbeck and its iconic Derby Park in Hamburg for round one of Global Champions League. Will Jack be ready to get back into the competition? I've been feeling good for one or two weeks now, so I thought it was a good time to try and start riding again, and all good so far. Jack Whittaker this season, actually. That kick in the back three weeks ago. Goes for the extra stride, holds for seven, and over the Deutsche Vermögensberatung. A determined Jack jumps clear in the first round. Whittaker still recovering from that injury he sustained two weeks ago. Horse, in's here. There they come, there's a the finish. Good start there from Jack Whitaker. Yeah, he is upping the pressure. Yeah, I guess you could say that, bounce back. What do they say, uh, what do they say, back, back stronger. Jack smashes it, helping Madrid in motion to second place, while his uncle John secures first. I was trying to beat him, obviously. We, we're, we're going in there as family, but we're gonna. We, we, there's no uh, hesitation, you know. We just want to beat each other and come out on top. 
Exactly, yes. We have to keep them on these young guys on the toes, you know. We have to make them try a bit harder. Yeah, no, I thought I rode fantastic, to be honest. And the spleen was keen, so uh, I'm keen then as well. Meanwhile, although Sanna Tyson and Konkadam didn't set the world on fire in Hamburg... And it is the second last that goes behind not just Sancho Bay Pirates, but also behind Stockholm Hearts and the Sultan's Drop is now guaranteed of a podium to Grand Prix. Michael Pender, not to be outdone by his friend Jack, makes it through to the jump off in the Grand Prix. Michael Pender. And finally, the podium in an unusual joint second place with Andre Team. It felt amazing in Hamburg. Yeah. Kelly was fantastic again. He jumped brilliant. But I think that was actually quite cool, actually, at the same time as the uh, Andre team. It doesn't happen very often, you know. Yeah, Mikey, I've known him, I've known him since we were on ponies. He's always, he's always been very, very talented. As you can see, he's got that kind of natural Irish abilities. He's very relaxed about everything, and he, he just kind of gets, gets on with it. Every time he goes in the ring, he, 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 he more or less was a clear round. I think when, when we both want each other to win, but we're not going to let each other win, you know? Well, it's quite simple. We're friends, we're competing against each other, but um, in the end, the results work itself out. Everybody's trying to help each other as much as they can. He's pulling up them rankings like, like no other's firing up there, so I've got to try and follow him, I guess. We've got to fight for it a bit, and at the moment, he's beating me a lot more than I'm beating him. <laughs> as the championship race continues through Europe, we next meet our under-25 riders in Stockholm, in the historic Olympic Stadium. Well, I think today and uh, upcoming days will be yeah, a bit crazy here with all the people and especially like with the Olympic medals from uh, Peter Fredriksson and uh, the other, all the Swedish team. During the season you see uh, we have like a lot of U25 riders in the global and we are all a bit from the same age, so also good friends. And you see when one is in the lead, you want to beat them, uh, it's a little bit, uh, but it's good, it motivates you more and I think we all put ourselves on a higher level. I think for sure they are better than me. They are riding much more long, long time than me, you know, I just started when I was 15, so they wake up, they were already on the horse, you know. Yeah, Sana is a good friend of me, uh, she's the same age as me, so we did a lot of uh, youth uh, international shows together. But actually all the U25 riders uh, here in the Global, we started with Polish children, juniors, and it's always the same people that you see, so we have a good uh, relationship with uh, all of them. Well, my relationship with the under-25 uh, riders are just, uh, yeah, we know each other because of, co uh, of the shows, of course. On the end of the day, we probably have a drink together sometimes, but uh, it's not that I'm really close connected to them. We're not really competitive, like, specific between us. It's just between everyone, all the riders. <laughs> Friendships aside, how are our under-25 riders feeling about the competition? We are in Stockholm in the Olympic Stadium in the heart of Stockholm. I'm also riding in the team this week together with Marco Zening. Let's hope uh, we can put a good uh, result together for the team. This week I have uh, Luna here, which is actually at the moment uh, my best horse. This is Kupa Veratien. She's one of my top horses at the moment. She's a bit of a character, she's a bit fresh and a bit sharp when she, come, when she comes to new places. Takes her a couple of days normally to get into it. So. And we are going for the uh, big class tomorrow, the team competition. So, fingers crossed. Global Champions League, the round that is the halfway stage of the season. Jill Thomas now in the rain with Luna van Adenhoff. He goes for four, has her on the hind leg. And both approaches work. Jill Thomas makes it happen with a time fault. Ay, 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 with a time fault. Jill and Luna jump well, getting only one penalty for exceeding the time allowed. But it's a tougher round for Jack and Q Pavaretti N. Whitaker, on the other hand, is one of the leading riders of uh, the season. Five appearances, four clears. The time fault is coming. That's guaranteed. 
Is it just a time fault or is it also a jumping fault? And how many time faults? Oh, is this very costly? This is very costly. This is four for jumping and six for time. Jack Whitaker. Tomorrow, I didn't feel like I was that slow. I should, should have gone faster, really. I should have been more of aware of the time allowed and all my fault, really. I'll see if I'm on the team or not. We'll just see, see what they think today. Probably not, but and I'll jump, hopefully qualify for the Grand Prix. Go to bed and hopefully wake up on the ball for, on the ball for tomorrow. Global Champions League round two here in uh, Stockholm. Here's Gil Thomas now. Stretching over the back rail, massive jump over that oxen. She is in super form. Despite a strong performance from Jill and Luna, Balkansford United just miss out on the podium. I'm sure he's disappointed, uh, especially about the teams. I know Luna, like, I know she's my favorite. She's such a fighter in the ring. So I guess he's a bit disappointed about that. And yeah, you land up just next to the podium, which, which is a shame for both of us. And Sanna Tyson has another disappointing weekend, clocking up 12 penalties in the team class and failing to qualify for the Grand Prix by one place. Oh, and there it drops. There it drops in their hand. They're in Demir Soy on Kiss and Cry. Jack and Pavarotti were not picked for the team in the second round, but can they pick up their speed as an individual? Come on, come on, come on, OK? Little flowing forward with the upright. And now the Aurora Boreal is the northern light. Oh, and it comes to a stop. Oh, and it's ooh, and Jack Whitaker. Straight away his uh, safety jacket yeah. inflates. Right. That's okay. a good thing. Talks Yeah, no, the spleen's fine, no bother at all. I just left a bit quiet, the oxygen around, maybe. It, 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 it Was I inside at the time? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, you're well inside, yeah. Yeah, you were well inside, it was good. Fuck, she's a fucking jumping gun as well. Then. She can jump tomorrow, she can. Twice, so I don't really know. It's a bit of a spooky plank, the last fence, and she's a bit green at this level still. Maybe I just left her a bit too much on her own, and she had to do a bit too much for herself, but these things happen, you know? Yeah, no, no Grand Prix now for me. Hello and welcome to the City of Love for the ninth stage of Global Champions League. Jill Thomas is here in Paris as a team reserve, so he's taking the opportunity to try out a new horse to this level, Theramas. Uh, this week I wasn't riding for the team because my horse uh, that I took here is a bit less experienced. Needs to have some experience on that level, so he needs to jump a few times it. Also I go next week to Monaco with him, so I think it's a good preparation for next week. I have like a few horses, but yeah, there are a lot of shows, so it's good if we can stop, step up uh, now to also a five-star Grand Prix level. Can't take every, to every show your best horses. Meanwhile, Mike Kawai is back jumping for his team. Six to get home and there's the finish and the time is good. They carry 12 from jumping and three from the clock that adds up for Mike Kawai. Oh, stands down, who has lost his mojo on Goldwyn. Unfortunately, Mike fails to repeat his early season stellar performances. Grabbing everyone's attention, however, is another young rider, new to the Global Champions League this season. My name's Lily Atwood. I ride for Stockholm Hearts as an under-25 rider. For sure, these are some of the hardest shows in the world, and I think for any under-25, it's their first season, it's difficult to get into. You know, you need to do a few shows before you realise how the courses ride, how the arenas ride, because they're all so different. It's overwhelming. Um, you know, you have a lot of pressure for, to do well for the team. Stockholm Hearts, powered by H&M, is a brand new team in the Global Champions League this year, featuring big name riders, Marlon Bayard Johnson and Peder Fredriksson. I wasn't expecting to get on such a good team, but 
You know, they, they contacted me and of course I couldn't say no. When I found out Pedro was on the team, it was, you know, amazing. He is always someone that all the riders look up to, so that was definitely really exciting for me and I just felt so willing to learn from him and everyone else. Yeah, Marlin also, she's, you know, one of the best female riders in the world and I feel like me and her ride quite similar in some ways and she's so lovely. Here in Paris, Lily jumps for her team alongside Lily Keenan. The shape of the jump over there now. Lily Atwood is doing a great job and is about to produce her first ever clear as there is a blank and it's the first ever clear for Lily Atwood. Both our horses jumped super on day one. A double clear in round two really pushed us up. Yeah, it was definitely girl power. Me and Lily are good friends, so it definitely helps. And it got better and better for Lily as she finished the weekend with an outstanding performance in the Grand Prix. Deep tried he can handle that. And the time is great and the both of the Lilies will jump clear in this Grand Prix. Look at that! The second place in the Grand Prix was amazing. Um, my horse just jumped so well. He hasn't had a fence down all week and, you know, to be stood on the podium with two other amazing riders was really special. Hopefully this proves that the team doesn't just run on Marlin and Pedda. You know, we're a six-man team, not just a two-man team. The global champions arrive in Monaco, playground of the rich and famous. Mike is determined to get back on track. Normal nine. Young. Normal nine. Pull a bit and then balance. Nice. Continue eight. Stay tall. Think straight. Good rhythm in the turn. A little bit out first. Jump to Oxer. Stay tall. And keep going, but keep him on his feet. Don't fly. I mean, nothing special with the distances. Yeah. Only there, a little bit short for me. Six. Six, I do five then. Hello and welcome to Monaco Monte Carlo for the first round of Global Champions League. The first day in Monaco goes brilliantly for our under 25s, with Michael, Jill, Mike, and Lily all jumping clear for their teams. And fast forward is going to go clear as well. Extra push to the youngster, and it's a clear. Jill Thomas. And it's a clear finally again for Mike Kawai. Good boy. Very good. I try to like not to disturb him, like nice rhythm to good rhythm. I think we had a good start. Yeah, Monaco is again a totally different show a bit. During the Globals we have all kinds of shows like big grass arenas, big center arenas, but also small arenas under the lights in the evening. And that's here in Monaco. So uh, it's not every horse that fits this kind of show as well, but I think for Fermas it's good. Well, seeing this arena on pictures, it really looks small, but actually when you get in there it even feels smaller. Um, I, did, I couldn't have too much preparation because they came straight from Paris, but she just lit up in that arena and just felt incredible. The young riders' spirits are running high. My horse is in great shape, so hopefully tomorrow he can deliver again and um, give her good results for the Pirates. As the day of the final round arrives, Mike and Lily weigh up their chances. You are good, no, yesterday? Yeah, she was good. Yeah, she's really good. I jump her again today. Hopefully another double clear. Strong. Now in the first place, no, the, the team. And you? Where, where, is, where are your team sitting? I think we are standing like 11 or 12. Yeah, I was a little bit struggling to jump clear. Not special. And then, you know, you try to fix it, like you try to ride a little bit more, but the nine doesn't work like that, so I, I really... It's the way he goes, like this. Really let the horse what they want, what they yeah. want to do, and then just trust what's good. Yeah, I hope I can do a double clear in the team, and then let's see. You looked really good yesterday. My plan is 
uh, now I'm going to ride the, the horse which I'm going to jump to the class. Ask him if he's uh, ready. I have to give him some candy, treat him and a, bit, a little bit of brush to make him happy. He really likes it, like doing like this. So I did this and then uh, I can give like, please jump clear for me. And it works. <laughs> it works, yeah. So uh, I do the same, same routine. Today is going to be, I think, a very hot day. Uh, 28. It's, for, it's really hot for the horse. Merci beaucoup. The heat is making the riders a little nervous as they get ready for the big team class. So I'm completely happy. I rode her this morning. She was really relaxed, so hopefully it'll get a bit cooler. It's very hot now. It takes a lot out of the heat. We're in second place, going into round two today. Um, I think we have a good chance to be on the podium. Hello and welcome to Monaco for the second round of Global Champions League. Round two is less successful for Jill and Feromas. With Feromas van Beek gets a little bit long into this combination. It's a back reel that goes in the second one and Valka Swart United drop behind London Knights. And Michael Pender is also feeling the frustration. And no, oh, it's not a clear. Meanwhile, Mike Kawai is determined to boost his team up from 12th place. The Rainbow Oxford and it's again good jumping. Very strong. Godwin. London Knights have just landed on the podium. Happy? Super happy. The big teams are coming in. Double clear from Kawhi and Hutton. And Atwood riding. And Lily also jumps a double clear, taking her team to the top. Yeah, it was so good. We just missed out on the podium in Paris. So to win today was really special. It's the biggest result of the season for them both. We were last night 12th place and then today we finished in second. Of course it was unexpected. We just pray to the God. And then today the God uh, was uh, next to us. <laughs> Global Champions League gives um, the younger generation uh, Great opportunity to jump at these shows. You can be on top of the world the one week and then at the bottom of the pile the next week. It's very hard to get into five-star shows now. Without the Globals, I wouldn't be able to stay at the top for so long. Next time, as the Global Champions League hits London, Volkensvard and Rome, the teams are running out of time to make it to the top of the leaderboard. Will our under-25 stars crack under the pressure?